tell y'all already look good. I can tell y'all look the y'all look good, okay? Because if I look good, y'all look good. Hey gems, it's Cinderella OG and welcome back to my channel. So guys, we are getting into my updated makeup routine, my everyday makeup routine. It's about time because I told you guys I was gonna do this like a long time ago, but I'm finally here and able to do it. So I'm excited to get into it because, you know, things have upgraded, things have changed and we're really gonna get into a good routine today, okay? So like I said, I am doing just an everyday makeup routine. So this is not gonna be any eyeshadow or anything like that. Um, now eyes are included in this routine, but nothing crazy to where it's like you can't do it with like if you didn't have an eyeshadow palette. So this is very like beginner friendly, especially because I have my little cousin right here on the floor. I don't know why she's sitting on the floor. Hi. She's waving and she just said hi. I, in my last vlog, uh, I was teaching her how to do her makeup, right? And it's been a process. Actually, that was my second time showing her how to do her makeup. And she has been doing a very great job. But I feel like it's because she's been having a great teacher that's been teaching her detail by detail. Sometimes when I see certain makeup routines on here, even like mine, I feel like we don't realize once we have a routine that we're going into, how detailed we have to be with the description of the products that you're using, the brushes that you're using, um, even the placement and the way you use brushes. So I'm here to do that with you guys today and she is here to ask certain questions if you know from the perspective of a beginner so that I can answer them for you guys while we're here. So we are going to go ahead and get into the routine. I hope I don't touch my hair too much. I just love it so much. So I just wanted to look perfect on camera for you guys. You know, I get all nervous and stuff when I get in front of you. <laughs> So first and foremost, it is very, very important that you guys have a great skin base. So whatever your skincare routine is, make sure that you are like doing it before you do your makeup. No one's skin is perfect. Nobody's skin is perfect, but you want as close as you can get to greatness, right? Whenever you're applying makeup to your face because makeup is an art and our faces are the canvas. So um, to go ahead and top off my makeup routine or my skincare routine rather, I'm gonna go in with the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream and the eye cream as well, the eye rescue. Um, and I'm gonna use these to go ahead and kind of just you know complete my makeup routine or my skincare routine. Why do I keep saying that? Complete my skincare routine. Now the thing is guys, if you guys want a full makeup routine, I'm gonna punch myself. If you guys want a full skincare routine, I'm more than happy to do that for you guys both evening and um, morning. So now I'm gonna go in with my primer. Um, I use the Milk uh, Hydro Grip Primer. I haven't had a better primer just yet. This just hydrates my face the exact way it needs to be hydrated, so I can't come up off it just yet. So I'm gonna go in with my primer everywhere as well. Skincare is done and it's time to go into our eyebrows first. Now, this is gonna be an experiment that we're all doing together because I have noticed, right, that the technique for your eyebrows is more, has a lot more to do with your concealer and how you conceal your eyebrows rather than how you fill your eyebrows in. I'm going in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freeze um, Styling Wax and um, you don't have to do this if you guys want to fill your eyebrows. I do do like some of my routine filling my eyebrows as well. So you can skip this step if it doesn't apply to you, like if you don't have that many brows. But if you do have brows, especially if you have thick brows, I don't have like super thick brows, but like I have enough brows to where this step helps a lot. And so I'm just gonna use the other end of that brush to carve them. So I have two gels that I use, also from Anastasia Beverly Hills. Um, I have the dark brown one and then the clear gel. Um, I think I got this like as a gift set in Sephora, like I wanna say like a few months ago. I used my points to get it because I really wanted to try it out. But um, I'm gonna go in and just, this fills the brows, okay? So like I was saying earlier, I think a lot of the times when we want like a soft glam look or a soft everyday look, we want our brows to be as minimal as possible, right? So just go in with that. 
and brush it. I noticed I'm not brushing the front of my brows because I still want to have that feathered look. So, and the wax helps it stay in place so that the product that you're putting on now, literally it just picks up right where it's supposed to be. So now I'm gonna go in with that clear gel and this is gonna clean up everything as well. And it softens um, the brown that I just put on my brows as well. Get your favorite concealer. Now, if you're a dark skin babe like me, this is when I'm gonna have to give you guys some, some tea, okay? This concealer, Chris not Eck. This is crack right here. I love this concealer. This is the Dior Backstage Flash Perfector Concealer. And I just, I can't get enough of it. Sometimes I apply it directly onto my brows. Sometimes I use my brow brush. I prefer to use my brow brush because I just, I just do. So I'm gonna go ahead and clip my hair for this part because I really don't want any concealer to get in my hair. Brushes being clean is very important as well. As clean as you can get them because I think I had like one use of my brushes but, uh, since I cleaned them. So they're not super duper clean. Um, I do have a new beauty blender. <laughs> if there's one thing about me, while I'm going in the checkout line at Sephora, I'm gonna buy a new beauty blender. I'm gonna go in at the top first. I usually, I don't really mind going at the top or the bottom. And it really is based on like what I do with my brush. So as you can see, it's heavy on this side. So that's how I know whenever I'm using the brush this way, like a pencil, when I'm using, you wanna make sure to hold it like a pencil because you don't wanna do it all lackadaisical. If you do, it's not gonna get the sharp consistency that you need whenever you're doing your brows, okay? So hold it like a pencil, but like angle your arm kind of like, like a right angle, but to the side. So elbows this way, or if you're left-handed, you know, the opposite way. So this is where the concealer is, right? So I'm gonna go where the concealer is. If the concealer was on this side, then I'll go on my under brow first, as you can see, because that's the way I use my brush, okay? And then I kind of brush it into my forehead. So you wanna get a concealer for this that is as close to your, um, I wanna say like as close to like your skin tone as possible. I like a little bright, you know, eyebrow. So mine's like a little lighter than my skin tone. Um, but I always cleaned up with foundation anyway, but I like my eyebrows to be bright. I like them to pop out and I always get compliments on my brows doing it this way, so. You tell me who's doing it wrong. <laughs> so we're gonna go in with the other side, see where that's placed. So now, because of the placement, I can go into my left side. Now my arm is still in a pencil, still hold your, your brush like a pencil, but now my arm is going this way. Remember when we were doing this side, we were going outwards, and this time we're going inwards. So our arm is to the outside this time. When we're going inwards, our arm is to the inward. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that yeah, make sense? No, I, I understood. Okay, good. Instant clean, y'all see that? Work. Okay, there we go. Because of where this is now, I'm going to go on my under eye on my right eyebrow, right? Because that's where it's placed. So when it's on this side, I can either go on my under brow, on my right side, or my top brow, on my left side. When I do this, I usually bring it down to my um, my lid. Now I'm not doing eyeshadow today, guys. Like I'm not doing a big eyeshadow look today, but I usually do bring it down to my lid whenever I am doing eyeshadow because it serves as a base. Your concealer can also serve as a base whenever you're doing your eyeshadow, okay? So it's kind of like a primer for your eyeshadow. All right, y'all. How are your brows looking? Tell me they're not looking good. I know your brows look good. I know they do, I know they do. So now we're gonna go ahead and go into the face makeup because like I said, we're doing a light routine today. Now, usually if I'm doing like a super, super light routine, I'll go in with my Chanel Le Beige Water Tint um, Foundation. It's a light coverage foundation. Um, and I usually even sometimes wear it whenever I'm like not wearing any makeup at all. Um, and I just kind of want like an extra like, you know, filter effect to my face. So that's the effect that this gives. But today I want to go in with my Giorgio Armani foundation with you guys. Um, in another video goes, maybe if I'm doing like a no makeup makeup look or like a light light makeup look, maybe I'll show you guys how we do this one. 
just request it in the comment section down below but today we're gonna go in with the Giorgio Armani for full coverage um, a luminous silk perfect glow flawless foundation and if you're my shade I wear this in 13.5 brush with pressure make sense brush with pressure because what you're doing is you're making sure that the product is getting more onto your face than it is onto the brush. Because the it's always gonna get into the brush either way you cut it, but you want more product to be on your face than on the brush, right? So beat that thing into your face. That's why they call it a beat face, you get me? Okay, foundation is on, isn't it? And as you can notice, I didn't do too much with my brows. As I said, guys, I really like when my brows pop. It doesn't matter what kind of makeup look I'm doing. When my brows are popping, that's when I feel like I'm popping, okay? Now we're gonna go in back with our concealer, the one that's more of our color. And uh, this is honestly my favorite part. Concealing my face is my favorite part because it just looks like a little project. You know, like color in the lines. That's what it gives, you know? So these are the places I go. First, I go into my forehead, my nose, Pay attention to the placement. That's as far as I go. I do not go into my inner corner of my eyes just yet. This is as far as I go. Upper lip. And this is really great if you need to hide a mustache. Chin. And finally, your jawline. Now, it's also very important the way you place your concealer on these parts as well because you don't want it to be sloppy. What happens if you put too much concealer and if you put it like kind of off somehow, your concealer starts to kind of give this effect of, how do I say it, muddy. Because it kind of like just starts to spread everywhere, right? And you don't want it to be spreading everywhere. So be precise in the placements that you put it. So if you guys need a screenshot these first placements, you can. I use this Juvia's Place Concealer in shade 10. And it's a little more neutral and my face is a lot more warm. I use a neutral one because I really want my eyes, like my under eyes to pop, right? So I go with my under eyes and my nose bridge because that's the, like, the places that I want to be highlighted the most. I go in with this concealer and I don't use the other one at all whenever I'm doing those placements. I go back in where I had the other placements um, and I highlight my the bottom part of my nose even more. I do a straight line down the bridge and then at the tip of the nose, I'm just kind of like Rudolph in there. So now we're going to wait for our face to dry a little bit. Um, in between, you can do your setting spray on top of it just to make sure that your concealer is really setting. So I'm going to go ahead and spray my face down with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray. I don't know about y'all, but I just can't use anything that's not beauty blender. So if you guys are looking for a good beauty blender um, that is not as expensive as the beauty blender, because I do realize $20 might be a grip to just be buying one like little product, right? So if you guys are looking for something else, um, I know Real Techniques has really good ones at Walmart and Target. So, you know, very affordable if you guys are looking for something like that as well. Now make sure that your hands are dry after you wet your beauty blender. I know it seems like an obvious tip, but make sure your hands are dry and even squeeze your beauty blender in a towel or in a paper towel because like you want it to be wet, right? But you want it to be wet so that it's soaking up or I don't know exactly why it needs to soak. It's not soaking up product, but you want it to be wet enough, but like damn, not wet. How do I use your dry beauty blender? Yes, I have. So why it just does not blend as, as well for your face. So you yes, it does look a lot like it looks like really patchy. In fact, I think like my very first makeup routine, I don't get me wrong, but I feel like I used a dry beauty blender because like I didn't know what I was doing. I just kind of did what I felt like worked. Um, and even like when I used a beauty blender that was too wet, I didn't realize how muddy it made my face look as well. You know what I mean? So now I'm gonna go in with my concealer brush because it's been enough time to dry. I'm gonna go in with my concealer brush and I'm gonna pat that into my face. So I'm only going into the dark spots right now, like as in the spots where I have the darker concealers. Now if you don't have a concealer brush or you don't wanna use your concealer brush, you can wait for me to use the beauty blender for that step. Again, make sure you're handling your brushes like a pencil. But when you are handling the brush on your face, right? 
You want to also be precise to where, how precise you were with putting on that concealer. That's how precise you need to be with putting on, uh, with using your brush to blend it in. Cause this is where things could get muddy. So now that I've put them all in the places where the darker concealer is, now I'm going to go with the lighter concealer. Now, if you have just a regular concealer all over your face, then that is fine. Just still do the same steps. So I don't go too much into my center of my eyes because, or, or the corner of my um, eyes and my nose because that is where the beauty blender is gonna come into play as well. So just gonna do the other side. And I'm also not gonna do my nose with this big brush as well, so. Say it with me, a big ass brush means a big ass nose. <laughs> big ass brush means a big ass nose. There we go. And there's nothing with big, wrong with big ass noses. We have big ass noses. <laughs> And um, we love them, they're beautiful. I love my nose some days. <laughs> I love my nose, however, you know when you're doing your makeup, if you want your nose to be snatched, then you know. Now if you don't want your nose to be snatched, like I said, a big ass brush means a big ass nose. So you know, you might want that, that's a good thing. I'm just giving you the facts. So now we're gonna go in with our beauty blender and we're gonna go into the um, lighter spots because I think I'm pretty well blended on the darker spots, right? So I'm gonna go into the lighter spot. So remember I said I wanted to go into the corners of my eyes there as well. Wow! You should be looking blended by now, yes? So we're gonna go in with the other side now and I squeeze my beauty blender so that it like fits the nose piece, right? So, so that the product doesn't go too far. Because the fact of the matter is, when you're doing this, it does flatten out the product. As you can see, it's not as skinny as it was before. But that's why our uh, concealer, rather, or not concealer, our contour is going to help us out in this place. Especially because, for me, I use powder contour because I don't like the muddy look. Like, my makeup gets so muddy whenever I use um, cream or liquid contour. So I don't use liquid contour for that reason. And then you tap the nose as well. So now we're gonna go in. I dip with my small contour brush and see how small I get it, right? So I dip into both, because I kind of just like, like to tap it. Tap off the excess. And now we're gonna go in. Where you see that line, that gap of the line where you should have like between your inner corner and the little skinny note. That's why we want that skinny line, right? Because it is gonna flatten out, but look at how it gives that line of where we're supposed to outline, right? So it's like coloring in the boxes, right? So now we're gonna bring it down. And the reason we start so high is because we wanna bring it into the brow. That's the easiest way to not look like your face is a dead body carved out on cement ground. And then the tip of my nose, I kind of do like a triangle. So bow, bow. I let them meet at the middle. And I do a good little sucky suck. That sounded terrible. I, I, I do a good little sucky suck, yeah. I said it. I do a good little sucky suck to kind of highlight it a little more, right? And then I bring it all around my face so that we don't look like our foundation is the wrong color, right? This is the easiest way, right? If you just kind of leave it everywhere and you let your, your highlight kind of just go everywhere, you let your concealer kind of just like blend everywhere, this is the easiest way, it's happened to me, for people to tell you your foundation is not the wrong color, or it's not the right color. When it really is, it's just your concealer that might have just been misplaced, right? So I always give a rim shot, hey, boogie boogie. A rim shot, hey, come on. Sing it with me. I want a rim shot, hey, boogie. I'm myself in All right, room. no problem. <laughs> Do you have one of these? I'm not saying you need it, but you need it, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go in with my Fenty powder uh, in Nutmeg. And wherever I put the darker concealer, that's where I'm putting this. So this is why I use darker, or rather colored shades rather than translucent shades. But again, if you only have translucent shades, this is fine too. But I'm gonna go in and do a clean sweep. 
pat and sweep, pat and sweep. You're seeing the contour start to pop a little more, right? And the nose is getting skinnier and skinnier. The contour is very important because of where you place it, right? But the powder placement is even more important because that's where the snatch of the nose comes from. The powder, not the contour. It comes from where you place the powder on your nose. The more you go inside, the more you get rid of that like nose, right? The more you get rid of the definition of your nose, I should say, actually. So this is a Fenty setting powder in honey. And now I'm gonna go back in, tap off the excess, by the way. Now I'm gonna go back in. If you have a translucent powder, by the way, I go heavier on my under eyes with a translucent powder because like the translucent powder, although it's translucent, it still has like kind of like a brightening effect, right? So go heavier on the under eyes and the nose bridge and you go lighter on the, um, the other parts where you put your, your regular concealer, right? So now I'm gonna go wow, wow, back into that nose section and definitely back into the under eye as well. While this is going ahead and baking, um, I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my bronzer. So I use my big blush brush for this bronzer. Um, as you guys can see, I've, I've abused it. But this is where things start to like pick up, I think. So instead of sweeping off our powder, we sweep off with bronzer. It gives a more warm and rosy look to your makeup, right? So right above where you put your contour line, that's where you're gonna go in with your bronzer on those cheeks, right? I smile. Kind of bring that up towards our brow, okay? Wow, we're already almost done, guys. I like a good angled blush brush. So now I use the Sephora Pro palette and I'm gonna go in, I use multiple blushes at once. I'm toxic. So I'm gonna go in with the, um, I don't even know what these shades are called. That's how long I've had this, oh my gosh. Red, red, red carpet? I almost said dark bit. That's how terrible this is. Red carpet, premiere, and after party are my favorites that I mix together. So, bow, bow, bow. Be generous with your blush, but don't be too generous, right? If your blush brush looks like this, that's okay. Just don't sweep too hard. Do not sweep too hard because you will end up with a ayoop jump scare, okay? Don't sweep too hard. Now again, remember when I told you guys we're not applying eyeshadow? Again, I lied. I found this on TikTok, this hack on TikTok. Forgive me for not remind, remembering um, who gave this tip, but if you guys are looking for more of like an eyeshadow on the go, just kind of sweep it into your, your lid, right? And now you have like a little rosy eyeshadow. We already had the crease going, right? So now we got like a little rosy eyeshadow going. Now I'm gonna go in with my big powder brush. So this is the uh, Healthy Glow Sheer Powder. Oh, it's so gorgeous. So I kind of just dip my brush into that. And then where we had the darker um, tones, we're gonna go ahead and brush that off like that, right? Now notice, this is still here, still here. It's still gonna be here, all right? All right, now, so guys, we are going into lashes. I've already applied one of my lashes, and um, I think the key for lashes is to find, if you are applying lashes and you're not wearing individuals, find a lash that works for you. I love a good cat eye. Lash placement is also very important, but the lash that I use, the lashes I use are the Wonder Cat lashes. You can get these at the Beauty Supply for, I think, like $3, and I use March today. I usually use Kathleen, but she was sold out the last time I went. We're going back to the Beauty Supply day, though, so I'm gonna give me some Kathleen. I found that whenever I'm doing my liner, and you know, the thickness of the liner helps sometimes with this as well, but I found that whenever I'm doing my liner, it also helps whenever I, my lashes not sit on my lash line because it gives me that droop as well because the lashes sometimes can be super heavy, right? So I kind of place it just right above um, to where it's still giving that angle. Now, if you have naturally super, super duper cat eye, you don't have to do this, but it's something that I do to just kind of lift my eye a little bit as well. You want to put on your lash 
enough glue on the ends to where it's going to stick because your ends of your lashes are always going to be the ones that want to like jump off the cliff. The lower part right here actually stays. I use my finger by the way, but you guys can always use tweezers. So the front corner stays in the front and the back goes like kind of like along the line of your wing. It's another way the wing helps us, right? Look at that placement. I have different shaped eyes, guys, so it's not the eyes, or it's not the, the lashes, it's the eye. And also we have to still do mascara as well. So I'm gonna go in with my Lancome mascara once that dries and just kind of fill that in so that, you know, cause we did get like some face product on there. So you just wanna kind of like brush until it looks, it looks like it's cohesive. Scary stories. Wipe off your makeup off your hands, but then wipe it off your lips. Some people kind of like the like powder and the concealer on their lips. I don't, I don't. Give me my natural lip color before we get into the lips, please. Thank you. I'm gonna go in now and brush that off and see how we have like literally the perfect glowy under eye. And a beautiful contour from my dad. I can tell y'all already look good. I can tell y'all look the, y'all look good, okay? Cause if I look good, y'all look good. Now that that's all done, we are done with our makeup and it's time to spray it down, baby. All right, so the makeup is done. What do you guys think about your face? I love the way I'm looking right now, and I really hope that you guys do too. I hope that these tips were helpful. I know this seemed like a lot, and it seemed kind of long-winded as well. I know it might be a lot more minutes than the average makeup routine, but I wanted to make sure that it was detailed so that you guys, as beginners, and if you don't know really how to change your makeup routine, these are some of the tips that I've used to go ahead and give myself what I consider to be my most flawless beat since I started using makeup. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like this video if you liked it. Comment down below what you liked about it and subscribe to your girl's channel. And I will be seeing you guys in the next video. Stay blessed and beautiful gems. I love you guys so much. Smooches.